Marking its 40th anniversary in 2022, Blue Door is the largest emergency housing provider in York Region, providing life-saving support to children, youth, adults, seniors, and families at risk or experiencing homelessness. Along with offering emergency housing and housing retention support, in the past two years, Blue Door has expanded its service offering to further work toward preventing and ending homelessness through inclusion, the first supportive housing program for two SLGBTQ plus youth in York Region. Construct, a social enterprise by Blue Door, providing supported skills training to help youth and adults break barriers to employment and secure meaningful careers in construction trades and launching in 2022 a health hub which will include a nurse and in-reach system navigator to help people regain the health and well-being needed to secure and retain permanent housing. Join Blue Door's mission and become part of the solution by learning more at bluedoor.ca. We at On The Way Home would like to acknowledge the original stewards of whose lands this podcast is recorded on. In York Region, we recognize we're on the traditional territories of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, and that this is the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit. And in Vancouver, we acknowledge that we are on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squahomish, and Tsleil-Waututh, whose presence on these lands continue to this day. Welcome to On The Way Home, a podcast dedicated to the issues surrounding homelessness and the incredible experts making a difference in the lives of homeless people. Remember to subscribe to the podcast anywhere you're listening and share it with a friend. Welcome to another episode of On The Way Home. I am your host, Michael Braithwaite from Blue Door, but this podcast is not just a Blue Door production. It is a partnership with our good friends at the Canadian Alliance and Homelessness. And hey, you should check out caeh.ca they're doing some really cool work around built for zero uh, and do you know the biggest conference in north america coming up in the fall uh, for caeh it is time to register for that you by the time you listen to this podcast it will be too late to submit something to present uh, but if you want to sponsor that uh, if you want to sponsor the conference i'm sure they would take your money and allow you to sponsor still but sign up for it it's a great conference with amazing speakers um and i think one of our uh, our guests today also has a conference coming up in the fall that you can um that you can be a part of as well and at blue door right now we are excited by the time this podcast airs we'll be very close to opening up a brand new 18 unit transitional housing building that was built by housing new york in york region is built and owned by housing new york and operated by blue door Super cool, very energy efficient, truly affordable. Uh, and they did this in just over a year or two, which is pretty quick. It's a modular build. So exciting times, 18 more units for the good people of York Region. Affordable, supportive units. That's what we need. So lots of good things happening there. As always this week, we have great guests on the show, but not one, but two guests on the show And I'm going to introduce them now. If it sounds like I'm reading their bios, it's because I am. First, we have Marlene Coffey, who is the Chief Executive Officer. What a great last name, by the way. It's loved worldwide. Uh, And Marlene is the CEO of the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association. Most people know it as ANFA. Marlene's leadership at ANFA has helped the organization redefine its focus on leading sector transformation through an economic development approach to housing. Marlene is a registered professional planner with not not just one, uh, but two master's degrees. Wow. Uh, Specializing in municipal economic development and finance, she is currently earning a a designation as a qualified mediator. Wow. Uh, That is impressive, Marlene. And with Marlene, we also have Tim Ross. Now, Tim Ross uh, was on the predecessor podcast to this one. Uh, out of the blue, and Tim is a nationally recognized nonprofit community and cooperative housing policy advocate with years of leadership experience in housing and homelessness. He is the found, founding president of the center of and of the center and executive director of the Cooperative Housing Federation of Canada. CHF Canada is a national membership association of housing co-ops representing over 1,000 members and home to over a quarter of a million people. Marlene and Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Great to be here. Good to see you. 
Now we have a standing question. It is great to see both of you as well and you continue to do outstanding work. We have a standing question that we ask every guest because it's a little different. Uh, everyone's answer is a little different, some similar themes, but different. We're gonna start with Marlene, then we'll move to Tim. So Marlene, what does home mean to you? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question. And uh, thanks so much for asking. So home, home to me is a place where I can be my authentic self. Uh, to, use, to use my own example, it's where I feel safe and where I can be with family and of course a place where I can thrive and renew and do all the things that would be very expected in life like raising a family and going to work and getting kids off to school and so on. It's a place where I can advance myself uh, in a good life and of course if we talk to our members and the tenants that they serve, what we hear, the common thread among all people is that people need something that's decent, something that's uh, safe and stable and of course affordable. So to me, home is a place where I can be the authentic and best version of myself. Fantastic. And that, you know, I don't think we've heard that before. So you are being authentic in that way as well. Tim, how about yourself? What does home mean to you? Such a good question. And, and thanks again for the invitation to, to be here today. Uh, I like to think about home in the cooperative context as being um, a safe place to, uh, to live, uh, but a place that's also connected to a really strong community. Uh, and uh, a home is where you can build memories, where you can renew yourself, where you can raise a family. It's a safe place. And, uh, um, and what we know right now is um, a ho housing is also a human right. So everyone should have the human right to adequate housing in Canada. So it's, it's also really linked with our fundamental human rights as well. Absolutely. And you know, with a common theme to both your answers, I didn't hear anything about four walls and a roof. It's not really about the structure, uh, but what it means to you. So excellent. Thank you uh, for sharing. Now, if you are in Ontario right now, uh, today is what, May 17th. We have an election coming up on June 2nd. Last night was the final debate among the leaders of uh, the four main parties. And um, both your organizations are driving a campaign uh, called hashtag vote for housing. So vote number four, housing. Uh, we saw this in the federal election. Things have not changed. In fact, People could say the crisis is even worse. What can you tell us about this campaign and how did it come about? Marlene, I'm going to go to you. Sure. Thanks. Thanks again. So um, thank you so much again. Uh, you know, we're really glad to see. Uh, I did watch the uh, um, debate last night and, of course, very, very happy to see that housing affordability and particularly deep affordability was key and central in the debate and all four parties, four major parties were discussing the issue around that and of course that is part of what we strive to achieve as a nonpartisan campaign. So how did, how did this come to be? Our voteforhousing.ca campaign came to be because there is a need. Uh, we know that a third of uh, uh, people in Ontario are renters and of those uh, uh, individuals, a third are in need, um, in, in core need, uh, which means that housing is unaffordable and unstable. And so because there is a crisis, uh, we as the sector associations that are currently housing half a million people in the province of Ontario, of course, we hear from our, our providers, our members that are landlords, that the issue's not going away. In fact, it's becoming more and more difficult. And so as you start to see uh, what is happening in Canada, in, a, in Ontario, and not just about the pandemic or our economic response to it, but really our response in building social infrastructure uh, to ensure that Ontarians are safe, and have a place to live. That is how we build a productive uh, economy, productive communities, where to your original question, 
uh, we can thrive and all things are based in home. Absolutely. Well said. Uh, housing and more importantly, affordable housing. And when we say affordable housing, we mean affordable housing, truly affordable, because that's thrown around a lot. And, and if we look at a CMHC definition, affordable housing is seen as 80% of market rent, uh, which is not affordable to too many. But affordable housing is on the minds of people in Ontario. Um, let's paint a picture. Can you help us understand what's happening uh, in the province right now in regards to housing, Tim, uh, we'll start with you and Marlene, if you want to add after, please feel free. Sure thing. Well, we're, we're really glad to see that Ontarians are, um, and, and particularly the political leaders, are starting to have this critical conversation about more deeply uh, affordable housing. And if you ask what's, uh, if you ask what's happening, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call on my, uh, on my phone here. Uh, <laughs> um, so if, if, you're, um, if you're wondering what's happening in, uh, in housing in Ontario, um, we are experiencing a serious housing crisis in Ontario. And it's something that's affecting uh, more and more people than, than ever before. Uh, the, the cost of housing is, is extremely high. It's becoming even more difficult to produce and, and, and operate and sustain uh, deeply affordable housing. Um, we are experiencing serious uh, inflation, uh, which is making it harder to, uh, to put you know, food on the table, but also to pay the rent. So, and we also have um, a housing system that has uh, really uh, been, been starved, uh, really of investment for, for decades. And that's starting to change, uh, but it needs to continue to change. And, you know, we've looked at the, uh, the platforms of, of all the parties and, and you know, we're, we're pleased to see that they're starting to propose some, um, some solutions. Uh, but if we thought they were going far enough, we wouldn't be having this campaign. And, uh, and if we didn't think more needs to be done. So we, we really want to see uh, parties seek a mandate in, in this election to solve the housing crisis uh, and solve homelessness by building more deeply affordable housing uh, across Ontario. And, and really to make this the top issue in the province for, uh, for the next four years. And politics is a bit of an imperfect sport. Um, there's, there's, there's room for all the parties to respond and, um, and, and to make this commitment in, uh, in this election um, because it is... Uh, the number one issue. We we uh, we recently commissioned some polling that really shows the overwhelming majority of Ontarians agree this is a top issue, and and they further agree that uh, the government and the parties um, aren't really saying enough about deeply affordable housing, and that's where our campaign comes in. You're absolutely right. I mean, I think um, just recently too in Ontario there was the housing. It was called the Housing Affordability. Affordability Task Force, but it actually was about housing supply more than affordability. Uh, it was a misleading name. I think they acknowledged that that this really was it wasn't supposed to be that. But you know, we're not just dealing with a supply problem here. We we actually you know we actually need uh, affordability in there as well. Uh, you what what is it? I have two questions. It's a two part question. I'm going to start with Marlene. What has the react reaction been so far to the campaign, and what are your hopes? Uh, for the campaign. We'll start with you, Marlene, and then I'll go over to Tim. Sure, great, great question. So um, in terms of our campaign, uh, what we have done is cr made a very easy, very easy uh, website for people to come visit and um, have a connection with their local candidates and party leaders, um, making it as easy as possible just with a postal code to send in a message uh, to the candidates and the political leaders letting people know why it's important to them and in terms of that success what we're seeing is that very authentic uh, messages are being sent uh, directly to the candidates so that they can of course carry the torch in their work uh, in their in their positions as as leaders of our communities 
what do we hope to achieve while we're wanting to build momentum we're wanting the the voters to speak directly to their political leaders and deliver that message which is um, really nonpartisan it is an issue that is impacting all Ontarians and of course we all benefit by having uh, affordable housing built right into our communities and so in terms of a target, what would we like to achieve? Well, we'd look, <laughs> we would like to build, um, build and be part of that. And we are part of that supply solution. So the not-for-profit sector or community housing sector uh, builds 90% of the affordable housing in the province of Ontario. And um, we are only 5% of the overall market. So that shows you that there is a real need and real opportunity for us to build. And we've identified that right now we need to build 99,000 units over the next 10 years. And that was a pre-pandemic number. So we know that number is already a bit dated and needs to be uh, expanded on. In addition to that, we're, we're talking about a very complex uh, system here with uh, many solutions that we are building as part of the campaign. So the second pillar of that campaign is about supporting the infrastructure that we already have. And what that means is ensuring that the, the system is funded so that we can repair what has already been bought and paid for and make sure that those renewals are in place to keep the infrastructure in good shape so that we're not moving backwards, but at least holding the line and then building more um, as we add to that. And then the third pillar is about protecting uh, and making commitments to end homelessness and to secure rental as a viable long-term option where our sector, of course, our mandate, our whole existence is based on the premise that we are here long term for housing affordability in Ontario. Marlene pretty much summed it up nicely. I don't have much to add. Really, we're, we're looking to uh, engage as many people as possible who are concerned about, uh, about housing in Ontario. Uh, and and to really give a give an inspirational message that the this isn't some abstract and far away issue. This is something that uh, Ontario uh, residents can speak up about in this election because there are politicians and decision makers who actually can support real effective solutions to address the housing crisis to to build more deeply affordable housing to protect the deeply affordable community housing that we have today, but also to support more broadly renters um, uh, to make renting more viable in this province uh, because uh, we know renting really uh, is becoming more and more challenging for, for, for people. So um, how can we fund robust rental assistance programs, especially for uh, vulnerable populations to, uh, to make sure that um, everybody can have access to, to a safe and affordable place to call home. And our, our campaign makes it easy for people to sign up and, and participate using the engagement tools on the campaign website as well. Now, you both talked about some of the solutions that are out there, but quite often uh, politicians and all the parties will say, hey, we, we know there's a problem. We know there's a crisis <laughs> that we're well aware of. But what do we do about it? So what are some of the... You know, going to, the, I'm sure you have, here is our um, advice around solutions you should be putting into your campaigns. What are some of those uh, pieces? Uh, Tim, we'll start with you, then we'll, we'll go to Marlene. Uh, sure. Uh, well, Marlene already mentioned a couple of them. Uh, we have an action plan. There's really just, there's five pieces to it. So uh, one is to, to build or acquire um, at least 99,000 more deeply affordable homes. Um, in the affordable nonprofit co-op and supportive housing sectors over the next 10 years. We need to, you know, not only build new, but we also need to acquire um, housing as well. So we're a, a big issue that we're seeing in communities all across Ontario is um, a lot of older rental housing that really uh, meets the needs of, of lower and, and moderate income renter households 
is being bought up by uh, larger institutional investors and and they're using uh, different strategies to basically uh, significantly increase the uh, the rents on these buildings to do some modest uh, renovations and and so we're seeing the phenomenon of economic evictions due to rent increases rent evictions because some modest renovations have happened and the rents have been increased or we're seeing demo evictions we're seeing these properties redeveloped and uh, and we're seeing a significant net loss of, of naturally occurring rental housing in Ontario. So not, we, we think building new is very important, but so is the acquisition and protection of existing low and moderate income rental housing. By, by converting it into not-for-profit and cooperative housing, we are able to protect the affordability, protect the communities, um, and work alongside the communities that are in place to take control of their housing and, and, and have a stake in their, um, in their community and their housing stability. So, so those two pieces are, are really important. Um, we talked a bit about reinvesting in the existing community housing system. Um, as Marlene mentioned, community housing is often the only form of affordable housing left in communities because of the financialization of housing and the rapid appreciation of the real estate market. So we need to make sure that this system works well and continues to be supported, uh, that, that this housing remains in a good state of repair and is in a position to, uh, to grow as well. Now, we also know that there are significant housing disparities out there and one of the ones one of the housing disparities that we really want to call attention to through this campaign is to act in solidarity with indigenous leadership in in Ontario uh, and and so we're calling on uh, the parties to adopt uh, a, a policy commitment to implement an urban rural and northern by indigenous for indigenous housing strategy because the the inequities and disparities in housing outcomes are just unjustifiable given the wealth that we have in Ontario and in this country. So, um, so we, um, we, we, we have a specific action plan uh, and some recommendations around that. And then Michael, you know, in you, you, you know, this, uh, this point as well, it's extremely important to us. Um, the, uh, the cost of homelessness in Ontario is it far exceeds the, uh, the cost of managing homelessness and maintaining homelessness in Ontario far exceeds the cost of actually solving homelessness. So, so we have a, a platform point, an action plan point to commit to the prevention and the elimination of, of homelessness. So those are some of the main, um, some of the main pieces, but I also, I already mentioned the need to pledge to make renting a more secure and in viable option, making sure that renters receive assistance, making sure that renters are protected in Ontario to make renting a more viable option. Those are the five points in our, uh, in our action plan that we're hoping to see all parties adopt. Uh, and, uh, and because housing is a nonpartisan issue that, uh, that uh, is, is supported by the majority of Ontario uh, voters in this election. And so, so awesome points. Um, we, I asked before, how's it going? What are your hopes? But what has the reception from the four main parties been to, uh, to the campaign? Have they been receptive some more than others? Are they picking up? Are you seeing some of these uh, points reflected in their, their campaigns? Marley, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, well, of course we're regularly engaged, uh, um, for us, um, uh, election season is, is a very sh short term uh, period, but we have long term relationships with the government and with all parties. So we do make a concerted effort over years and years to build those relationships to make sure that the issue of housing affordability is par always part of the conversation uh, with policy makers and, and influencers and ultimately decision makers and that we're in the public discourse as well because everything comes back to the voter and uh, what people are saying that they need. And so we hear loud and clear from our polling that voters are saying they cannot afford uh, where they live, that there is not enough affordable housing and that everyone benefits when people are housed uh, appropriately. 
We're also hearing even more so um, that housing affordability is a top issue and is equal than, if not ranking higher than other issues that are also important like health care and transportation and the environment and education. And so, of course, as you start to think about all of these things, they're all interconnected. And the, the, the number that I like best in everything that we refer to is that investing in community housing is a great return on investment. And so we know for a fact that for every $10 that we invest into social infrastructure through community housing saves $20 downstream to the taxpayer in saved costs from, from areas like health uh, care and hospitals, from social support services and the justice system. And so the big question is how did we get here? And we got here because there has been long-term systemic underfunding of the community housing sector for many, many years, and it's touching all levels of government. And so now it has come to a point where we have the critical momentum to really work together, and this includes government and the private sector and the, the community housing sector and many other stakeholders to make a plan, set some targets, fund it appropriately, and address the solution in a systematic way where we all benefit from those uh, synergies. Well said, Tim, anything to add? Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of interest from the from the parties, from candidates. Um, as Marlene mentioned, we have really long-standing relationships as organizations. What's different about this campaign is we're uh, wanting more and more supporters to connect to the issue and then to connect more directly with the parties, the party leaders, and all the candidates, uh, because it's only that um, that volume. Uh, in that persistent volume, not only during the campaign, but afterwards, that will uh, make sure that whoever forms the next government is going to be attentive to the need to uh, uh, build, um, protect, and, and support more deeply affordable housing and, and to support renters more in Ontario as well. Yeah, and I, I hear what you're saying. Let's talk about volume. We know this is the, the more voices involved, the more people involved in this vote for housing campaign, the stronger it will be. How do both organizations and individuals uh, get involved or find out more about the campaign? Uh, Marlene, I know you mentioned this at the beginning, but let's mention it again. How do they get involved? How can they be a part of the solution? The quickest and easiest thing for people to do is visit our website called Vote for housing.ca and that's with the number four send a message you the landing page uh, has a very easy way to engage with your local candidates and uh, party leaders and send a message to express yourself that's where your voice can be heard and of course we've also made it really easy to pick some uh, social media shares and ways to engage in a pledge and put that out on Twitter so that we uh, keep this uh, very critical issue front and center uh, during this election season. And then of course the work, the real work, happens after the election when we're, when we're working with our leaders uh, to ensure that the next four years and beyond um, are supporting a systems approach to how, uh, how we're building uh, social infrastructure, supporting uh, community housing, and really addressing this long-term uh, housing affordability that we already know how to do when we do it really well. We just need more. Fantastic. Uh, well, you know, listen, the great you... part about the campaign, uh, Michael, is uh, if you just want to come along and, and, and offer just a couple minutes of your time, it's really easy to do, but you know, if you want to come along for the ride, we're gonna, you know, continue to have calls uh, to action, 
uh, and and uh, create tools for supporters to use to, to continue to stay involved and to maintain the momentum. And you also mentioned how do organizations get involved. So uh, organizations can also promote uh, the um, uh, the campaign tools to the website, but we're also get, uh, uh, making it really easy to for organizations to offer their their organizational endorsement to to our campaign as well. So uh, so there's lots of ways to get involved, but that that the first start is the voteforhousing.ca uh, website. Well, thank you so much to both of you and your organizations for building that platform, giving uh, Ontario. Uh, people of Ontario, a voice in this campaign around housing. It matters. We know there's a housing crisis right now. Uh, and I've seen it all. I've seen your work all over social media. So everyone else, get behind it, retweet it, share it, uh, have your voice heard. This matters. Uh, we once had uh, Adam Vaughn uh, on it. He said, look, what people may not understand is that we can have a national housing strategy but if the provinces, if the municipalities are not on board in doing that, the work doesn't get done. We can have federal money that flows to the provinces, but we need action to take place. And yes, this is a vote for housing campaign. We heard it here uh, from uh, Tim and Marlene. However, I heard both of them clearly say it doesn't stop after June 2nd because we will have an elected government that then has to deliver and we need to keep pushing them to make sure that their words and their promises turn into action. So go to vote for housing. That is vote number four housing.ca. Become part of the solution. Uh, and let's see if we can get some action moving forward um, in this election and afterwards. Thank you both so much for your work on this, for the work you do daily to make the lives of people in Ontario and across this nation better. Uh, and for the, the hard work you've done pushing affordable housing forward. It's so appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Michael. It's good to see you again. Thank you also very you much. You as well. And listen, Marlene, it was great to have you here and thank you for the good work you're doing at AMFA and you have an awesome team there. Listen, that was another two great guests and I could talk about these guests for a while, but let's talk about this campaign. We heard them, it's volume that's gonna make a difference. So we need the sector to share, to endorse, to get behind this, spread the word. Uh, housing we saw in the federal election was not in the top 10, but through the actions and through the work of sector leaders, it, it slid into the top three. And now even more so, it's, on, it's top of mind for every Canadian and for the people of Ontario. Your voice can be heard. Uh, this is a solution. Let's hold them to it. Let's hold them to their promises afterwards. Check out voteforhousing.ca. Great guests, as always, sharing important work. Another great episode of On The Way Home, and we will see you next time.